So we're going to go through this. So for something to test, this could be many different things. Uh, wayfinding is one way to do it in buildings. Do you have a building where it's difficult for people to get to one area of your collection, for them to be able to find where the help desk is, things like that. Signage. Do you have too much or too little signage in your building? Is it overwhelming people or maybe just completely non-existent? This sort of does go hand in hand with wayfinding, but it can also work with your services. Uh, websites and apps, those are kind of the bread and butter of usability testing. It's where a lot of the literature about usability testing comes from. So rather than walking alongside next to a person, you will instead be sitting next to them as they navigate your website if you have an app, if they're nav how they navigate your app, things like that. And then services, this could be, I have a picture in the bottom left here of a self-checkout machine. So that's going to be the example we're using today throughout this presentation, but it's something where you have both the tech element, you have possibility, uh, possibly the signage on it, you have all this all wrapped up into one. So questions to answer. So the questions that you want will come out of your overarching question or goal. Um, for example, if you've had a coworker or someone who maybe who's really in charge in your library and they just come back from ALA and they're like, I had this great talk with this guy on the sales floor who has a wonderful deal on self-checkout machines, we're going to replace Everyone who works at the CERC desk, we're going to have one person up there. It's going to be, you know, this huge thing. Or maybe it's even something, should we move to fewer CERC staff, have them move and do more things in the back of house rather than front service and instead have more self-checkout machines. Can those in a specific area, maybe for this one, those without computer skills, those with little digital literacy, can they figure it out without staff help if the staff aren't present? So when you look at that, you want to figure out what, are the different kind of waypoints that'll help you answer that question. And for the ones I pulled out here is, can they start a transaction? Can they cancel a transaction if they realize they did something wrong? Are they able to differentiate between books, books on CD? Maybe you have the barcodes in different areas. Maybe there's things that are weirdly shaped and aren't easy to scan. And most importantly, do they know when they're finished? Is there a done button they have to click? Is there something where they might just leave it hanging thinking they're finished, but they actually haven't checked it out yet? Things like that. So the people, when you're doing that, this is everyone involved in the individual test. So it's not necessarily the participants you're looking for, it's people who will be there. So I say no fewer than two, which is the person running the test and the person taking the test, and no more than four. Because you don't want to have, there's always going to be the one person taking the test and you don't want them to feel ganged up on or just like, like that guinea pig, being watched, kind of, you know, uncertain what's going what's going to happen. I'm just getting more nervous. And the participant that you get should be from the population you want to learn more about. It's not going to be helpful for you if you're trying to figure out how people with low digital literacy are able to work with those self-checkout machines if you get a teenager who works at Kroger managing the self-checkout machines. It's, you need to get someone from what you want to learn. It's, otherwise, it's not going to be helpful for you. But I also included the guinea pig in the earlier ones, and this can be anyone. It's essentially a way for you to t run through the questions, make sure everything makes sense. And it may be better for you to pick someone similar to your target population, but in a crunch, you can just talk to a colleague or a coworker or someone, even you know, if you have a husband or wife or other partner and you're just like, hey, I need you to go over these questions, do they make sense? Something like that just to run through it so you know you're not missing anything obvious, obvious so you know that if you're doing something on the computer, that the computer works, things like that. So you don't end up in this horrible situation of, oops, <laughs> things like that. Now the roles. I, went, uh, I briefly spoke over this, but there's the participant, and this is the person who attempts the tasks, and the prefer preferably from the target audience, and this is the most important one, they are the expert. Regardless of what they do, they are absolutely the expert, because in a real situation, if not in this testing environment, you, you want to make sure that they can figure out what to do, that they're able to do this without having to think, that they can just go through it and that there isn't anything that will cause them to leave your library or stop being a user because that's what you want to avoid at the end. Then there's the moderator. This is the voice or the face of the test. They're the ones that ask the participant the questions. They don't take any notes unless there's something really intense that's going on like, you know, you see the note taker panicking and you need to get something down. It's very brief notes. And they may answer limited questions and we'll get a little bit 
into that further on, but it's not, they're mostly there to just be the supporter, the supporter and to run it and make sure it goes smoothly. The note taker is the silent observer. They should hopefully be able to write really quickly with pen and paper. I have seen in literature that people are less stressed out when they're in the testing situation if people are taking notes on pen and paper rather than on a computer. In reality, I've had mixed responses to this, so if you know someone who's a really good typer, maybe you want them there. What do you think, Joe? You seem to be making a face. <laughs> yeah, I think just the sound of a keyboard behind you recording what you're doing can be off-putting, and I understand the note paper. You know, you're fairly quiet. You're um, you're in the background. People, you're not as easy to notice. I, <laughs> I I'm totally with the write it down on paper over um, typing it. And Courtney, I agree with you. I'm also a very aggressive typer. So is it, if you, you want the participant to be as comfortable and as natural as possible in an unnatural setting, which is the testing setting. And then the note taker should be knowledgeable about whatever is being tested. They need to know, oh, this is a big deal that they missed this or did something different. If they just have no idea what's going on, they might just assume that this is normal and not write it down. So it's with these three people, these are theoretically the best people to have in it. As I said, you can have a minimum of two in which the moderator and note taker are the same person. You are not going to get the same depth and width, breadth of information. It's going to be a little more sparse, but if you're doing a quick one question test, there's no problem with doing that either. So. But your note taker is definitely your expert, wouldn't you agree? They know the software or yes. whatever it is in and out. That person definitely has to be the expert. Right. The moderator, not necessarily. They might have a passing understanding, but mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Or even yeah, so what he said is right. It can it can do that. And one of the I'm gonna actually I went back to this slide. One of the fun things to do is if you can let's say, you know, in this situation where you have maybe a board member pushing for more self checkouts and no, nothing like that, if you could train them even briefly in how to be the moderator or how to be maybe the note taker, things like that. That way it'll be more helpful if you, for you to be able to change their mind maybe and say this is something that we need because we have this large service population that isn't digitally literate and just having them be there to watch possible failure happen is probably more likely to sway them than you just saying something.